Hello and welcome to my light campaign playthrough. It's here at last, so yeah, let's just get on with it. We're gonna try and do a playthrough here. I did do a original one, as you can see there, Barking Alliance or whatever. Yeah, uh, I decided that recording stuff is hard. Swancombe Incorporated. That's a interesting sign, I'm sure. Why not? Yeah, uh, sort of. I don't know. Finding it tricky to talk and also do this. I think I figured out how I'm going to do this though. So all is good. Right, let's take a look at it. I think I'm going to be running on a medium difficulty game because this game's hard. Uh, well, it's more that I'm not used to setting up factories and stuff and I sort of need to... It, it's about keeping focus and things like that. I usually... I, I don't know. I don't like sitting and pausing for too long so hopefully doing this as a recording will encourage me to do otherwise. Uh, I've got a couple of basic ideas for how this company is going to run, but um, yeah, let's just start it. Some feeder text, flavor text, that's the one. Uh, yeah, and yeah, as usual, I'm, I don't want to say it's the same starting... No, I don't think it's quite the same starting markets every single time. They do very slightly, but it is generally... Utility budget is the largest, and heavy delivery and family being next one's up, usually at least. I think it does shift around a bit, but usually you either get family, utility, or delivery as being the biggest uh, markets. I'm thinking we go straight for the cash cake, utility budget, because that also means that we can make something cheap, and it being our first car with no familiarity or anything, we're really going to want to get something out quickly. So, I'm thinking utility budget, we aim for that, because in theory, that shouldn't be too difficult to get. And I do think we can actually adapt that vehicle to work as family utility budget. Uh, the family utility, this sort of area. Is it building a car for this will also hopefully help us cover these sorts of areas, since there's a lot of overlap. So in theory, we should have a good coverage. I mean, there's a decent amount of vehicles for sale here. Not so much in delivery. Utility, though... Uh, you know, there's a good thousand vehicles there. And that's just limited to awareness. If we look full-sized and our awareness will go up, then, yeah, it's looking pretty good. With... Um, uh, starting in Gazmia, we have, I believe it's Hepvesia as the other starting place, I want to say. So, yeah, there's, I don't know, a decent amount of starting vehicles to go with. It's interesting actually the differences between the uh, available starting demographics, but yeah, that's the plan at least. Um, utility budget, and we'll just aim for that first. I know it's not a good idea to aim for a budget demographic first, since they really like cheap cars, but I think I've got a plan for this, so I'm going to sort of do a quick run through of the build, um, if I can figure out which body I want. Right, there are two available ones. There's this one that you can't see, the 1946 van, and it has like a wagon variant, which could work, but I believe it's limited to, uh, yeah, one seat row, so we couldn't give it four seat, which wouldn't really work for things like utility budget. Alternatively, there is, I believe it's this one? No. One of the ones here, is it down here? Yes, it is. Um, the Morris Minor body, basically. It's probably better for what we want, because we're probably going to be running this first model for a relatively long time. I don't know, probably until like the sort of 60s at least. So, yeah, we're going to need a new engine. I'm just going to keep a family variant one for, for now. Yeah, I think that's the, the general plan. We're going to keep this one for a long time. Keep refreshing it. After that, we'll probably go on for more regular updates. As long as this loads. Hey, here we go. Right, engine. I'm... I'm not too sure. I'm thinking in line three. We go cheap and cheerful for this. In line three should give us some familiarity with V6s and stuff like that. And if we're keeping it as, like, smaller engines and stuff, that's fine. Or less cylinders, at least will be cheaper. So I think we'll start generating familiarity with inline sixes and stuff like that as well. So 
generally things that are quite appropriate for the sort of cars we're building. Alternatively, we could look at doing a boxer. But, I, I don't know, I sort of want to stick with what I know. Boxer engines and stuff like that, there's not really an advantage to it in this sort of thing. So, yeah, and I think we're going to go with pushrod heads, because if I remember correctly, pushrods generate familiarity with overhead cam. Uh, so, we get that sort of advantage later on. There's not really any point going with dual overhead cam in this game unless you've got VVT. That's where I see the main advantage. Sure, you can get a bit more power out of engines, but I don't think the benefit is too worth it unless you're seeking like every single bit of power. So, yeah, I'm thinking we just stick with overhead cam even until like 2020 is the plan. That might change. I don't know, we'll see. Very low bore engine. I, I'm thinking we go like a litre or something. I generally, uh, my target is about 30 horsepower for this engine because there's not really any need for it to make power. Uh, we also get the bit of a bonus there in that it means it's lighter and weirdly inline freezer the only engine where having a lower bore improves uh, or increases maximum RPM. So doing this sort of setup makes sense. Lean it out all the way. Go up like that. I don't know if there's any point having short cast. I suppose it wouldn't add too much. Could be nice for just getting a little bit more power. Hey, forgot to drop the uh, RPM limit. Okay, that's fine. And... Right, yeah, we need to... Oh yeah, 7.5. What was I thinking there? Uh, and yeah, I'll just back off some timing. 30 horsepower. And... We might as well drop the RPM a bit. There's a bit more reliability to be gained from it. I mean, we lower the engineering time just by a tiny amount. So, yeah, that's all fine. Yeah, I think this is a decent start. We might might just lower the uh, lower everything just a bit. Uh, it's nice. The last time when I tried recording this, there was a bit of a weird glitch where variant statistics weren't showing. So, I don't know what that was about, but yeah. Oh, one thing I forgot. Shrink the exhaust a bit. Is there any point having it? Like, I, th I don't see the point in sort of trying to maximise it. We're not really seeking every bit of power. Getting a bit more efficiency is sort of preferable. Uh, preferable, whatever. And 15.7% efficiency, we've got a decent power curve. It's not going to be quick, but that's fine. Then body, yeah, we're going to be using this pickup body, I think. We might try a wagon or van variant. And I see what takes my fancy. I believe utility prefers pickups, though. So there's that. Yeah, we'll just crush the driver there. No, uh... Quite a sort of big cabin, I suppose, for slightly better comfort. I kind of like to morph that in. I don't know. Just looks a bit more compact, I suppose. And actually, yeah, we are building in Gasmir, so I'm not sure if I really want to be shrinking the body down. Uh, like pulling the front in like I was. I don't know. Uh, we'll see about that. Markets in this game tend to prefer an overdrive. I'm thinking we do something like that because we're not going to get wheel spin. Open differential. Believe they want some off-road, so we do that. And I apologise for my mace clicking there in the background. Up to something like 14s, with like 155s on the back. I know proper race car. We've got solid axle rear suspension. There won't be any camber. We're going to need some tyre stagger. And if anything, they'll help us with brake balancing, um, getting the braking distribution right. So that'll be good. An off-road skid tray? Maybe. I'm going to try that for now. And we'll see how that goes. And... Yeah, let's just sort of... Stick it up to 70, sure. Basic, none. Yeah, two seats. Maybe we'll go up to three. I don't know. We'll try standard safeties, although that's going to be a big... Um, familiarity 
uh, not familiarity, uh, like, odds for one, engineering time. A uh, bit of a sink in engineering time, which isn't ideal. This is running way too stiff. Let's give it a comfort preset for now. Already that's decent, but uh, low practicality penalty. Probably because, yeah, way too soft. I was saying it's so light that you just sort of get the, get the, uh, the you need really soft springs, basically. Yeah, I apologise that it's like I'm not entirely finishing my sentences and things. It's, um, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'd literally give an example there. Yeah, it's not that I'm like scrolling to think or anything, it's more just sort of I constantly get distracted with things. Right, we're going to need to raise the right height up like crazy. And maybe stagger the wheels a bit more. Oh, we're doing a bad there. We're giving ourselves a zero. Or a tire size ending in zero. And it's fine because we can make the car oversteer a bit. And I'm happier to soften the sway bars because that improves off-road. Yes, give it no sway bars. I don't know, right, let's compare. How's it doing? Oh, apparently it's got double the utility of the vehicle it's up against. A lot higher off-road, but way worse fuel economy. It is a lot more reliable, though, which is good. But then, yeah, just comfort... Safety's pretty irrelevant. Oh, manual locker. Yeah, manual locker is a very good thing on these sort of things. You can see the jump in off-road we're getting just by doing that. Oh, yeah, an off-road utility, off-road goes through the roof. Delivery, yeah, all very good stuff. Oh, and actually, yeah, we'll go with leafs on the rear. And on the front, I'm going with double wishbones better. Plus, then, if we do want to make dedicated family cars, we already have that familiarity and double wishbone that we can then apply to other vehicles, so definitely want to keep that. And interestingly, it actually wants us to sort of square out the um, the brake bias bit. Scroll in the right place. Excellent. Yeah, just having a bit of extra brake bias at the back there, I suppose it helps Breaking a max load a little. Although it does hurt overall distance, so not quite sure what that's about. Okay, we've hit 190 in utility budget, but um not sure how practical that grain clearance really is. I don't know, to me it feels like there's a point where you're just adding right height and not actually benefiting benefiting from it, because you just sort of make it too high up. We are actually getting some decent load capacity at least from it. I don't know if I should try and balance out the markets a bit more. I feel like at this point now it's just so insanely high. There's no point, but um, yeah, maybe I should sort of aim a little bit. I don't know, that, that suspension setup too, well, it's so dodgy. That's the issue though, when you have cars this light, sort of any change just makes such a difference. So only 62 kilograms of towing capacity. So, yeah, not really sure what to do there. Up the gearing a bit, though. Doesn't really care too much. Yeah, okay. That's fine by me. 50 off-road, decent utility. Yeah, I'd say pretty decent. Let's, um... Look at the markets, we've got decent share there, even getting a little bit into city budget, and by a little bit, actually, yeah, that's kind of impressive. I think the thing I've learned from just sort of looking at the numbers in the previous playthrough, we're not going to venture into family for this first vehicle. I think we've got enough of a market in these sort of areas to justify just having a single model. I don't think I really want to spend time engineering a family car and sort of splitting it up too much so for now we're going to exclusively focus on the utility side of stuff and then we'll look at uh, family and things I don't think we'll 
venture off too far this way. Also, it's scoring 100 in sport. Okay, if you say so, game. Um, yeah, we're just we're just gonna stick for this for now. Name the engine and the car. I'm just gonna stick with calling them Model One, Model Two, just to keep things simple. For me, utility budget is just fine as a trim name. Just I just want to keep it simple for now. Don't get too attached to this company, okay? Yeah, is the general gist of it. So, yeah, I'd say let's just move on to the factory management. Since our car is made of steel, we're going to have to get a steel press for all the uh, body panels. And unfortunately, we can't just work around it like we could with aluminium, since you don't actually need aluminium presses for an aluminium car. Uh, since we start on medium difficulty, we get a medium factory to start with. Same as like if you we same as the uh, tech pool we get, we get plus one tech for everything because we start on medium difficulty. And factory setup, we don't need that many cars, so it's going to be working on low shifts. What I would like to do, since we're looking at the cheaper demographics get that price down we have a lot of money to start off with so obviously I don't want to go too expensive because then we'll never break even with this but I do want to get that cost down cost per car is decent I suppose but um yeah let's try and get this down so if I do this setup here I do get 100% efficiency I don't I don't quite get the efficiency thing because like it sort of it doesn't seem to mean the best exactly. I, like you, I don't know. I suppose it's just the most cost efficient way. Maybe is is my guess. Like the the best bang for your buck. I suppose I'm not totally sure to be honest. 140 million for that. Yeah, I I don't know. We'll we'll look back at this at the end because I don't want to spend too much on this, especially if we're just totally overproducing. But we'll see. Engineering management, and before we even adjust anything, we're over two hundred in utility budget, which is fantastic. So yeah, I don't think we need to produce that many. I think it was something like. 67 which I think you get like a bit of a manufacturing bonus or something uh, I'm not totally sure apparently to get best efficiency it's 49 or 50 uh, tooling and processes so if you go optimized you can drop the cost significantly but you do also drop the amount of cars you're making engineering time 48.9 months I'm happy to throw a bit of money at this to get it done quicker because I also want to make it reliable. Oh, reliability kills the time it takes to get it done. Alright, so we drop that. I kind of like it to be a 100% efficiency. I, I, well, I don't know if it's really needed for this. Because, well, alright, I want to lower the total cost. How much is for certain? So... It doesn't even get more expensive until we get like the really high levels of automation. So lower the total cost, but also yeah, I don't know I'm happy to produce less cars as we've seen from the market. So there's definitely not the market for three thousand cars to sell, or from the looks of it at least. From our current awareness, as we go up. Maybe, but we can always change that with the facelift, so I'm not too bothered about that. What I would like to do is get reliability up. I think that would be important. And also lower this to get familiarity with some stuff up. I think things like safety especially, because safety really eats into everything. Getting Getting that up quickly is going to be very useful. Yeah, let's lower this just a little. Oh, I don't like the way that's dropping. It's just under 415, producing just under, or uh, just over 3,000 cars. I, I, I don't know. I genuinely have no idea what I'm doing here. 
So I'm just going what I think works, but I'm not too sure. We have another medium factory for the engine. I think here we are going to be massively overproducing. Uh, our engine factory is just going to barely be working. I personally prefer to have like the engine factory be like a lot lower, but we uh, we do want to throw some like tooling quality and stuff at it. I think like 50 million and stuff is a bit crazy for this. I'd like to keep the engines cheap though. So I don't know, 40 million or just under it wouldn't be bad. And like under three hundred dollars production cost per engine is decent, I suppose. Yeah, I I, d I don't know if I'm doing this right. I have like sort of looked at it, but it's sort of yeah. Hang on. Okay, yeah. So from the looks of it, the efficiency thing here is literally just the best value for money, which is good and higher. Tooling quality, I suppose, means that you need to spend less money on factory maintenance and stuff, so good in the long term, I suppose. So, mm, I suppose this is fine. I genuinely, no idea, no idea at all. And, okay, that's good, that's very good. So, we can crank that reliability up a fair bit. I'm happy to throw some money at it. And yeah, six hundred dollar total cost for the engine maybe. Yeah, I dunno. <laughs> I genuinely don't. I'm gonna say that a lot this series. Just prepare yourself for that. And then also forty eight months there. We can go up a bit more in price. I, I like how I'm saying like I don't want to spend more than so and so, but I, I have no idea what's actually, uh, what what boundaries I should be sh setting for myself. Yeah, it's sort of engine. I'm not actually too fussed about about it. The main reason I want to lower it is because if you lower it, it um, if you move more towards a learning pressure, you get better reliability. So. For something like this where reliability is key, I think that's a good idea. Hopefully. It's also why I cranked up uh, cooling airflow all the way. And 48 months there. Maybe this is okay. Apparently a big increase to production units. Which mm, could make them more expensive. Thinking about it. I don't know. So... Yeah, our, our engine factories are going to be very, very underworked from this graph. But that's okay. It, it's all good. And forecasting tool. Right. Here's the bit I also don't understand because I just sort of adjust stuff and see what works. So according to this, it, we're going to have a rating of 290 before we even touch anything. When do I want to pay back everything? We could break even in three years. And after that it's just too expensive I suppose. Big problem I have with this and actually quite a lot of the uh, graphs that they have in the light campaign at the moment. They're all very pretty and very nicely done. All very relevant. But um, that's not changing at the moment is it? Yeah, You can see there the scale changing. So basically I just sort of look at this bottom number there and figure out where I want it and just try and make it as big as I can is the plan so yeah really wants us to have low minimum shifts which is fine by me we have lowered significantly actually and increased the cost oh right yeah because we're trying to sell more cars but in theory after 10 years oh that's nice that those tooltips there. With they're not highlighted. Yeah. Um I don't know, and we can actually we can toggle those off if we 
That'd be interesting if we just um, ignore the factory costs, which. Yeah, I'd. I don't know. I, I don't know if I actually want to uh, want to do stuff like that. Well, that doesn't matter what we change. Uh, tooling costs, things like that, and engineering cost. Yeah, just totally ignore engineering cost. It's fine. Ignore all of this. We'll sell it for free. Amazing. We've given our graph hydraulics. I'm not sure what this says really about what I've done, but changing the max shifts makes no difference at all. So... Oh, actually, you can see the factory utilization there. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I think we've got maybe a bit too many in uh, in the factory. Yeah, we're going to be selling at a very low margin because even if I increase it by a rate of like five percent, you can see there that um, it, it instantly cuts into our profits there. So yeah, we're going to be selling very high, a uh, very high, uh, or very high, very low margins, maybe like one percent, two percent, if that. And yeah, total cost of. Uh, 281 million and it reckons we'll break even at um, yeah what is it 7 years in theory so that'd be pretty impressive if we do that so what well, this goes to sale in 1950 yeah I'd accept that that's pretty decent and I have no idea if I've done a good job here or not. We might have uh, totally overproduced. Maybe I should have cut down on the factory stuff. I don't really know. Let's just sign off on this project. I have no doubt that it's telling me all the information I need to know and I'm just being dense, but yeah. Um, I don't know, right, R&D stuff. Because this is another thing I'm thinking. We will, in 1950, have access to mm, automatic transmissions, cheaper radios. So we will be looking at making a family car. I believe autos are also slightly better for utility. So, yeah, no need for that. Two leading shoe drums, though. So what I am going to do is go up to plus two on brakes. And I think in theory... We we should have the uh, the R and D ready by then. Or have two tech pool ready by then. So that'll be good. Is there anything else interesting happening? Aluminium don't really need that. Access to a two barrel carburetor. Potentially interesting, but I think we'll be making anything powerful enough to take advantage of that. So yeah, just a bit of R and D there. Marketing, because we've got a level 3 in Gasmia and a level 1 in Hetvesia. I don't think there's really any point marketing because everything here just has no relevance to utility stuff. Drivability, possibly a bit. But other than that, no, not really. So, yeah, I wish maybe like off-road was like something you can market towards because that is a pretty big thing that some companies market at. Yeah, um, I don't really know. Right, we're just going to... I'm probably going to show about six months of sales, I think. Let's just go. And here we are, coming up to it. And you can see our cost really ramping up there. Oh, that's expensive. And we're selling cars. Profit. Okay, that's a bit lower than we were hoping for. Uh, sixty-three percent utilized. That's decent enough. We've already got lots of stock, which shouldn't surprise me really. Wait, are we just selling at break-even? That could be an issue <laughs> if we are. Just want to check and make sure. Why are we suddenly so low? There. Um. I don't know. Do we start looking at? bigger demographic is there any point I don't know right let's look at our sales recently 
maybe we should just straight up target utility. Because we are selling better into them anyway. And apparently this is selling 28 into sports. Incredible. Yeah, um... That's a bit of a problem. Potentially. Although, utility has gone up massively. So... Yeah. How big are the demographics to us? So... In the theory, yeah, there's 2,000 curls available for us there, basically. That's... Mm, okay. I guess. I don't know, I'm going to let it tick out for... Six months just to get an idea of sales. If I want to... Or what I want to do here. Six months of sales and... Can we actually see total sales there? No. Um, although our competitiveness is going back up again. Um, I wonder if that's because we made a cheaper curl than our competitors. Could be that. Um, since the market's going down. I don't know. That sounds right for me. Um, I don't know. That wouldn't make sense in my mind. But I don't know. Also, why wow, that's... A lot of money we've lost there. I, I'm not sure if this series is going to last too long. I feel like I made some horrible mistakes in designing this car. But, um, yeah, we'll have to see. We've scored four points at least, so there's that. Yeah, in the next episode we're going to start off by designing a car. But, um, yeah, that'll be a... Uh, interesting uh, situation there since we have a lot less money yeah we're probably gonna have to take out a loan maybe we'll see but uh, until then thank you for watching remember to subscribe to boost and ethanol for more and until next video goodbye <laughs>